Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ashley Coyman and I wanted to just talk to you guys a little bit about the realistic side of this travel life and take y'all with me as I set up and break down the camper. It's pretty simple. I mean, it's such a small little camper. It takes us like five minutes, even with, you know, getting the bunks set up for Rupert. I just break those down every time we move the camper, but um, I want to take y'all with me, show you how I do it, what I do, and how I get ready to travel, and a little bit about how I'm going to try and navigate through these hot temperatures that we've got coming up. I am ready to get home. I have been kind of being held hostage in Washington State, uh, in the cooler regions of Washington. I've had really great, great weather on this trip all the way up the coast of California and been able to avoid a lot of the triple digit temperatures that the rest of the country was faced with and um, i'm just trying to find the safest route home because right now the united states is kind of like a tinderbox and there's wildfires popping up everywhere and i'm actually heading into a red zone today of you know warning so i'm i'm actually pulled over on the side of the interstate right now um, i stayed the night in this parking lot where the interstate kind of sounded like white noise but it's, you know, sometimes these are the only locations that you can find on your route that feel safe and feel comfortable. So you always go with your gut and then figure out our next step because some of the other places that were only like an hour from here were like in the mid nineties yesterday and temperature wise, there's been a cold front that came through today. So that's really going to help us out on our trek. And I have about three days of cooler weather to navigate through the rest of Washington to get to my next destination. But I decided to take my own advice and after accomplishing my dream of driving from the most southwest point to the most northwest point of the western coast, I am going to enjoy the rest of my journey on the way home because I was anxious to get home and now I'm like, why am I rushing home? Who knows when I'm going to be out here again? You know, like I'm out in the, some of the most beautiful parts of the country. I should enjoy it all before I get home instead of, you know, trying to just abruptly end this beautiful trip that I've had. So I'm going to enjoy the journey and I want to take y'all along and show you kind of what this is like to break down, set up, and prep for these hot temperatures that I've got coming up. I was just about to charge up all my devices as I drove and I am running into some cellar issues. It must have gotten low with all the rain that we've had. So we are going to use the backup devices that I have fully charged for these instances and then also plug everything I can in while I'm driving today. Whenever I start packing up the camper, sometimes these guys get a little bit nervous because they don't know what the day is going to entail and Rupert just stays in his little pineapple and sometimes I'll just move the whole pineapple out to the car. We usually have an okay trip. I just feel bad because like the it stresses Rupert out more than it does Charlie. Charlie's used to, you know, car rides quite frequently. So when I travel, fashion is never an issue. I really don't care <laughs> about makeup, the clothes that I wear, and people probably look at me and they're like, oh, bless her heart. <laughs> she can't dress herself, but you know what? I just don't care <laughs> and it's lovely. But um, I just want to give you guys a quick little rundown on how I break the camper down before we move. And Rupert's in his pineapple, so I'm going to have to, like, move him out. It's really simple. There's, I'm, I'm kind of a chaotic person. I thrive in chaos. I know some people have to be more point A to point B and have things a little bit more organized than I do. I mean, once you do this for so long, you just kind of become complacent and... Everything doesn't stay pristine while you're on the road. I mean, it's just the reality of the situation. Like I said, it can be kind of grimy at times, but you know, like you're out here having experiences and if you're focused on trying to keep your camper looking pristine all the time, you're doing it wrong. You're supposed to be out there getting dirty and having a good time. So um, this is how I live my life and I love it. But I usually just start by taking down my little decor that would break I just throw it in the bed because it can bounce around in here and then you know just take all the things that you don't want falling off and since I'm having issues with my solar I'm grateful that I've got like these little rechargeable lanterns because I can also use them for a power bank power bank but yeah I have two of those so you know that's what I typically use at night instead of using my lights um, 
that draw off the solar at night because I'm not getting it charged as I'm, you know, using it at night. So it's just easier to have the lanterns to recharge during the day and then I can use them at night. And they usually last for about, you know, two or three weeks a piece. So um, not using that much light and they use such low energy that they last for a really long time. Not a big fan of travel days. Let me show you how we break the rest of this down. Very important part. I almost forgot to tell y'all don't forget to check all your cabinets to make sure that they're locked because otherwise oh that one's that one's open we could have had stuff come falling out of there nice and secure secure okay so everything's secured so every time I leave a campsite make sure to take your dog's waste bags the pets waste bags your own waste bags whatever you use make sure that your waste from you and your animals is taken care of and then I like to go through the campsite and always leave it better than I found it. So, you know, just I, I'm missing gloves, so I don't have any with me right now. But just using a doggy poop bag, picking up some of the little bits of trash before we go. You know, always leave it better than you found it. That's extremely important. That keeps these campsites open and available. Even if it's just a few little things, like you're still contributing and making a difference. If we all did just a little bit, it could be so much better. Pop tarts. Okay. I'll go drop all this off and then I'll do another round or two and tell my own trash can is full and then we'll head out and I'll feel better about the way I left it. The old vintage Tupperware really comes in handy because I can just shove that down and close that lid until we get to a place to be able to dump it. So that is a nice little thing of those Tupperware containers and then you just spray it out with Lysol and let it sit in the sun. We're good to go. So yeah, not the most organized, but it works for us. All right, time to go. One last thing is just walking around your camper and making sure that everything is secured and that there is nothing underneath. See, I found a flat rock and I red deck MacGyvered a little bit. I just needed a little lift so that we were level. All right, we are ready to go and everything looks secure. Are we ready? Huh, Miss Charlie, you ready? Rupert, you ready? <laughs> you guys, you're ridiculous. All right, let's go. All right, I will see y'all when we get to our next campsite and I'm not allowed to record uh, during travel per my brother. He will kneecap me if he catches me doing it. So I will see y'all down the road. Things got a little messy in transit. So we are going to take the five minutes that it takes to set all this up. My cat is so spoiled, so spoiled. Let's 
show you guys how quickly we were able to set this up. So you see all of my junk right here. I've got to get that organized, but that is just laundry. And then this is food. So. <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, it's just real quick. Still got to fix the bed, but we are back in business, aren't we, Miss Charlie? Spoiled. Hmm? Where are you going? Charlie, you're blocking my way out, honey. I gotta go. There ain't enough room in here for the both of us. More water. Okay. Found a nice spot on the water here. Not a bad place to be for the evening. Instead of going into the heat, we went into the smoke um, to stay in the cooler temperatures. But this view is not complete without dog poo. That's why we clean up the campsites before we leave and we remove all the waste because I want these campsites to stay open. All right, off my soapbox. I just went to go check my solar and it's still on E, but then look down here, somehow my contact got taken out. So I've got to fix that real quick. Another redneck MacGyver moment. So I don't have a screwdriver. I keep meaning to pick one up at the um, store, but I don't have one tiny enough to fit into here. And I've had to fix this a few times to reset um, after I've had problems with the solar. So I just used my little tweezers and we just, yep, I just loosened it up a little bit. Make sure this is a really odd angle. I don't know how my dad got all this stuff in here, but all right, so that's held in there right now. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, this will give it some chance to charge. But I think we are onto something here, and I think it's going to be all right. I actually had to take both negative contacts out because I realized it might need a chance to reset. So I'm just giving it a few seconds and then I'll re-plug it in and see what happens. Fixed it! Woohoo! With some tweezers! Because I don't have a screwdriver small enough to fit into those, so my tweezers work. And it's not perfect, but I will fix it. I need to go to the store and get the right tools to fix it, but... It'll do for now. All right, it's time for some dinner. So I am actually going to have a big dinner tonight. I'm going to make a little Caesar salad kit with two helpings worth of salmon because I'm hungry. And sometimes I only eat like one meal a day when I'm out because I just get to going. And then I forget to like stop and provide nourishment for myself. So then I overdo it a little bit. But um, I got this really little fancy salad bowl when I was at Target the other day. I was like, all right, let's, uh, let's do this. I'm really excited to have a salad bowl because I've been lacking one on this trip. So this will be really nice. I also have an orange that uh, since I don't have lemon, I actually had somebody before they went on a cruise, they had given me all of their food from their freeze or their refrigerator. So I have an orange, so a little citrus with my salmon and I'm gonna put a little honey on there and some salt and pepper and probably just a little bit of Greek seasoning to give it some type of flavor. But um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> the key to dealing with fish in such a small camper is have a trash bag ready to go for the, when you cut open the package and get rid of that as quickly as possible um, or keep it in a confined space until you can actually like get rid of it. I am the queen of winging stuff when I'm out on the road. Well, just in life in general, not just out on the road, but uh, I am a procrastinator and a winger of things. So I just let it flow and whatever happens, happens usually. 
but um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this started so the fish can start cooking. Use a little bit of avocado oil spray and I'm just gonna put the stuff on there, like squeeze it in when it's on the pan. Um, just, I feel like that makes it a little bit easier, but. Oh, it's cut into two portions. That's why it says that it's two portions. I just couldn't see it when it was vacuum packed. One portion. And we'll just lay you on there. And this doubles as good stuff to put in Charlie's food for when her dinner's ready. If I can get out some of the juice, yep. Maybe to give Rupert just a little bit of salmon juice. He'll be happy. It doesn't really smell, so it didn't really have an odor. That is fantastic. There we go. Nice, generous portion there. We'll go ahead and just use this side too. All right, so lots of orange juice. Get a little bit of honey on there. Little honey drizzle. I'm probably not doing this right, but whatever. We are here to experiment and we are here to fail. Because the only way that you learn anything is by failing. You can't always be successful all the time. I think this will turn out good no matter how I, I probably i'll forego the greek seasoning and salt and pepper and then... it smells good like i said y'all i probably am not doing this anywhere close to right and while that is cooking i'm gonna go ahead and finish making this salad charlie is very interested in what's happening over here and all the smells she got off of her bed to come stare at me from the window. I love these little kits. I'm probably going to be like lethargic after I get done eating all of this. But I love the little kits because they are so good. Um, and they're just quick and easy. It smells good in here. So we'll see. It's the first time I've ever done orange and uh, honey on salmon. But I saw a recipe and then I just usually read half the recipe and then wing it. Did I get? Yep, I did. I got a little tiny spot on the pillowcase. <sighs> the joys of cooking in a small camper. Right, let's check on the salmon. Since so that's almost, I just got to toss the salad. It's looking actually mighty fine. I'll flip it here in just a second to let the other side get um, cooked all the way. Since I don't have an oven to cook this in. This little handy dandy thing that I picked up from Target that I already said. But it came with a little fork and I'm like, all right. We'll try it. A spork, actually. <laughs> so, and it's the perfect size for these little salad kits. I'm like, all right, score. And it was only three dollars. I've been looking for something exactly this size, and I finally found it. We're ready to flip, I do believe. Oh, it's looking mighty fine. All right, let's see. Definitely needs a solid flip real quick. This is where paper towels come in handy. I really hate wasting, but like I will use the paper towels to wipe out all the liquid, you know, from this when I get done cooking. You shouldn't be putting food waste outside. You can attract stuff. It's not good for them to have stuff outside of their diet because animals will find it and they will eat it. And that's how you also get rodents and stuff in your car. I keep all of my trash in my little Tupperware. And then every time I go like fill up gas or something like that, I will dump the trash and, you know, that includes the paper towels that I used. Oh, I need to get a plate out because this is done. I usually wipe everything down before I use it after we move because it bounces, things get rubbed together and it just, I don't know, it's dusty. I'm weird about stuff like that. Okay. All right, salmon, let's take a look at you. All right. Mmm, it smells good. And it doesn't smell like fishy fishy either. That's great. Let that cool down and then we'll deal with that here in just a bit. 
let the salmon rest because it's all the way cooked. You can tell it's all the way pink and flaky. All right. They've got these things like all the way up the West Coast. It's called Grocery Outlet. And I got that salmon for like eight or nine bucks for, you know, those two pieces, which it's a little bit of a splurge. But then I bought the salad for like five dollars. So, you know, I mean, I'm eating a gourmet meal that you'd pay twenty five dollars for somewhere else. And I'm eating it for 13. So these little hand wipes come into they come in handy. <laughs> little hand wipes come in handy. <laughs> But these are little antibacterial hand wipes. So like when I don't have a uh, regular sink to use, this is what I use intermittently. Sometimes I'll set up my shower and just use that to wash my hands, just depending on the circumstances. Right. So I'm just curious about the salmon. I know how the salad tastes. I might keep them separate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm very happy about this. I think I'll eat the salmon separate from the salad just because I don't want to mess up that flavor. Oh, orange and honey and salt and pepper. That was it. <laughs> and avocado oil. We'll add our little croutons to give it a little crunch. And I always wait until the last minute for those because I don't want them to get soggy. I don't even need a knife for this meal, but I'm going to go sit outside and enjoy it now and look at the lake that we're parked in front of. Y'all, sometimes you have, I was just about to go sit outside. Sometimes you have some sketch situations. This guy's looking like he's going to come over here. And the girl that he's with looks completely out of it. I don't want to judge, but okay, they're going on. I don't know how I feel about this place, but we'll figure it out. Oops. Not a bad view. I do have to go sit and eat inside. There's too many yellow jackets. Mm -mm. Come on, babe. Let's go inside. Mm -hmm. Go inside. Go inside. You okay? Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I I felt a little uneasy. So. I felt a little bit uneasy. So. Got it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Got it. Thank you so much. They did back in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, hang on one second. I left my salmon where my dog can get it. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. Some more, some more realistic perspective for you guys. I got done cooking this beautiful salmon. I took about three bites. I went outside to go talk to somebody about the people that I just noticed, and Charlie ate my salmon. She's in big trouble. No, you know better. Shame on you, Miss Charlie. And it was so good. I only got like two bites of it before this all went down, so I guess I'll have to get some more salmon. It was so good. I'm so sad. Charlie has been dubbed an a-hole, and I'm going to sit here and very saltily eat my little salad my caesar salad <laughs> i can't tell y'all how disappointed i am over the salmon but i'm just gonna get all of this cleaned up um i'll probably be hungry later because i didn't bring as much food with me um, I only intended on staying here one night and sometimes I overbuy and since I'm using a cooler, I don't like to waste food. So I only get what I think I'm going to eat. And even with like the stuff that I, you know, pick off the vines and stuff when I find, you know, like blackberries and stuff, I only pick what I intend to eat. I don't try to get more because it is really hard to pack a cooler. Your cooler's only good for about three or four days. And um, you need to replace the ice sometimes every two days because it's too warm. So I just really try to be conscious of what I have and 
I don't really have anything else <laughs> uh, to eat for dinner. I mean, I have stuff if I do get hungry to snack on. Like, I mean, I'm not out here in the middle of nowhere. I could probably survive for at least a week off the food that I have if I got stranded. But like, you know, I'm not going to heat up some organic curry right now. Like, I mean, I already cooked dinner and I don't want to do it again. <laughs> but I'm just so sad. I really wanted salmon. Oh, well. But I'm going to get all this cleaned up and uh, we're going to get ready for uh, an early night since I'll be thinking about food the whole night <laughs> now. My stinking dog. I love her, but I'm still mad at her. Ooh, that honey sticky. I might have to boil some water in here to get it to loosen up. Like just a little bit of water. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So this is getting nice and warm. It should wipe out pretty easily. I'm going to let some of that water burn off so I'm not um, using as many paper towels to get it out. But um, you know, this looks like it's coming off nicely. And oh, yeah, Nice thing about ceramic. I only use ceramic pans or cast iron. I don't use anything else. Um, that Teflon stuff is some nasty stuff. So... We just stick with the ceramic. These have been, um, this pan has been beat up pretty good and it's got a few minor chips. It's probably time to start looking at replacing it. Um, just, it's little Aldi's pan. I got like two of them for like 15 bucks, like two decent ceramic pans. So it has served me well since I cook almost every day on it. <laughs> I'm just so sad about this salmon literally came inside put the dog up my timing couldn't have been worse with cooking dinner with that whole situation because apparently those people that gave me the weird feeling had the cops called on them and there was a guy standing out there when I put Charlie in here because the guy had a dog and you know how triggered we are with all the animals and I put my food back in here because we were getting swarmed by yellow jackets out there and I think the honey was attracting them so I put it in here real quick I was just going to come scarf it down and then a guy that was there waiting on the cops to get here because he was monitoring the situation was like asking me about the camper and then I was like oh crap I left the salmon where Charlie could get it and as soon as I opened the door she was eating the last bite of it I'm so sad <laughs> this is so good all right I'm gonna stop talking about it because I'm just making it more real for myself and I'm still a little hungry because the salad was okay but that's really all I've had today and some blackberries so I'm I'm still a little hungry I'll find something to nibble on I've got some moose munch from Harry and David I'm sure that'll suffice not as good for me as the salmon would have been though. But I've got so much to be thankful for other than my salmon missing. <laughs> All right, stop talking about the salmon. No more salmon talk. Oh, and the sun kind of poked out, so I might actually get some solar today. We are up to 12.3 volts, just barely. I'll still probably just use my other devices since it's been offline for a little bit and make sure that I'm not. Um, all these yellow jackets. Make sure that I'm not um, overusing the battery and like damaging it. So we'll just give it a break tonight. I, there's nothing that I need to run. The temperature should be fine to just leave the windows cracked to let the air circulate through. And if I need to use a power bank, then I can just use a power bank um, that I've got for like charging your cell phone and stuff to run or to charge my cell phone, all that good stuff. And this is still really hot, so you don't want to burn yourself either. But the pan just wipes clean. And then of course you just sanitize it. So once I get all of this mopped up, the sun finally came out. And look at, you can see how smoky it is. That haze it's from all the wildfires burning around Spokane and in between. There was something that just jumped in the water. I think I, well tell me what, do you want it? <laughs> You're such a jerk. Are you a butthead? <laughs> you are. Okay. Wait. 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 Okay. Jerk. Said I wasn't going to talk about it anymore, but you're still in trouble, Miss Charlie. And you don't care. It's tough love, honey. We just got back from a walk and I'm not giving Charlie another snack them 
because she's in trouble. She's already had plenty of her snackums. I promised you guys I would tell you a little bit about how I'm going to cope with the heat while I'm on the road. So I made a swamp cooler, which is basically just two elbow joints that I cut into a styrofoam cooler and I cut a hole to put a USB fan in there and that will help me if you put ice in there and then it just pushes the air through and out of the elbow joint so that will help me hopefully me and Charlie and the cat stay cool while we trek home through unpredictable temperatures and that was an idea for my older brother but here's how we made it. Today I am prepping to get ready to travel across the hot temperatures with 50 watts of solar. So my brother suggested to make a swamp cooler. All you need for a swamp cooler is for me, I'm going to use a USB fan so I can run it off of my battery since I can't run my air conditioning unit unless I'm plugged in. This will help suffice during this heat. I just need to get a bag of ice to put in the cooler when I'm done. So to build a swamp cooler, you'll need a styrofoam cooler. You'll need some elbow joints, which I find to be the easiest. And we're gonna place these on here and trace them and cut them out to have a place for everything so it can work and function properly as we dive into this lovely heat wave that I've got to travel through to get home. Just to give you guys an idea of what this looks like from this angle. So I just have to plug this into my USB and that will run the fan. And so all the air will circulate into the ice and be pushed back through these little pipes here. So that I should be able to aim at like either Charlie and I, like when we're going to sleep, I can put that on my floor or put it on the sink area next to me. And that should be able to give us a little bit of relief, hopefully from the heat. This has been a day, to say the least. And um, yeah, I'm gonna have to find a new place to go for tomorrow, so. And it's just too smoky here and I'm kind of wanting to get through the smoke as quick as possible. I hate moving this much. It's stressful for the animals and Rupert. Seriously, dude. Okay. It's stressful for the animals. And he's got my tripod. There we go. Okay, are we are we situated now? Thank you. Um, yeah, but it's just been one of those days. And so, you know, when you have one of those days, you have a better day tomorrow. And it wasn't a bad day. It was just a day. <laughs> and um, moved from cold weather to smoky weather. Um, and I can already feel it in my sinuses. It's already starting to get to me a little bit. Uh, so we can't stay here too long. And I'm going to see what's close by and what I'd feel comfortable moving to. And just hopefully I picked a good spot for the evening because there's already been police that have come by. There's already been a few things happening. But this is uh, Off-Road Vehicles Park and OHB, I think is what it is. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, so it's right down from a residential neighborhood. You actually have to drive through a neighborhood to get down here. And then the road turns to like washboard for the last half a mile to get here so i didn't come or i didn't go further down which i'm kind of glad i didn't because there's been a lot of cars driving all the way back and i'm glad i didn't drive all the way back <laughs> there goes another car back there okay well this is a very high traffic area anyway <laughs> here goes some more cars out <sighs> second guessing my campsite tonight and my salmon got eaten by Charlie. <laughs> it's been an evening and I'm still salty about my salmon, but it's okay. I'll live. 
I live this little circus life and it's fine, but I'm going to find a new campsite for tomorrow and uh, we'll go from there. But anyway, I hope you guys uh, got a better idea of how I break the camper down and how I put it back together pretty quickly, you know, while we're on the road. I don't do a whole lot in order to be able to do it. I just make sure everything's secured on the floor because I would hate to pump the brakes or something and have Rupert's litter go all over the place. And I'm sure it's not good to ride with the bunks up like that because they bounce around and they bounce out of the little holes that they stand up in. So I just want to get somewhere where I can just like loose off for a little bit. And I think that's why I was so anxious to get home. But I realized that this time is invaluable and I've got to make the most of it. And so we're going to take the scenic route home and instead of just beelining home. So, but I hope this also taught you a little bit too about the swamp cooler and the idea there. I'm pretty sure it'll work good. I mean, you're going to be blowing, you know, chilled air in into the camper and you know, on the way home, if we need it for like the heat of the day, I'll just stop and see if I can find dry ice somewhere or some ice and fill up the cooler. And it's being hot is no joke. And I really want to try and keep my animals and myself safe while we were while we're trying to get home during unprecedented, unpredictable weather. You know, and then we've also got to navigate through um, possible you know, bad weather as far as thunderstorms. And then we've got wildfires and we've got all these things that we have to like really be on the lookout for and be on our game. I have started listening to Ryan Hall, y'all, uh, because of my friend, Amy, you know, he is pretty accurate with all of that stuff. So hopefully he'll be able to give me some insight as I am mapping my route home and trying to avoid all of this stuff. So, um, yeah, but we are going to try taking the scenic tour instead of jetting home. It's just too good of a trip to like rush to finish it. All right, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. And if you liked what you saw, please feel free to like and subscribe. And I hope to see y'all down the road. Have a wonderful evening. Y'all, the universe provides, I'm telling you, they are grading the road that I came in on as we speak. And it was really tumultuous trying to get in here. And it was only a half a mile that I had to drive. But I'm so grateful that I don't have to drive out on the same washboarded road that they are working on uh, smoothing it out as we speak. So that is great timing on my part.